want you to do is be very attentive to what is being said. There is a lot of repeating, but it is necessary. This is the uh, probably the best sutta in Madhrama Nikaya, as far as I can see. It explains a lot. After the Dhamma talk, please do not talk. It's best to go out, walk a little bit, come back and sit, because it really will help your meditation. Okay? <clears throat> Thus have I heard on one occasion the Blessed One was living at Sawati in Jetta's Grove, Anathan Pandika's Park. There he addressed the monks thus. Monks, venerable sir, they replied, the blessed one said this. Monks, I shall teach you the Dhamma that is good in the beginning, good in the middle, and good in the end, with the right meaning and phrasing. I shall reveal a holy life that is utterly perfect and pure, that is, the six sets of six. Listen and attend closely to what I shall say. Yes, venerable sir, the students replied. The blessed one said this. The six internal bases should be understood. The six external bases should be understood. The six classes of consciousness should be understood. The six classes of contact should be understood. The six classes of feeling should be understood. The six classes of craving should be understood. The six internal bases should be understood, so it was said, and with reference to what was this said, there are the eye base, the ear base, the nose base, the tongue base, the body base, and mind base. So it was with reference to this that it was said six internal bases should be understood. This is the first set of six. The six external bases should be understood, so it was said, and with reference to what was this said, there are the form base, the sound base, the odor base, the flavor base, the tangible base, and the mind object base. So it was with reference to this that it was said the six external bases should be understood. This is a second set of six. The six classes of consciousness should be understood, so it was said, and with reference to what was this said. Dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises, excuse me. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. Dependent on the body and tangible body consciousness arises. Dependent on mind and mind objects, mind consciousness should be, mind consciousness arises. So it was with reference to this that it was said the six classes of consciousness should be understood. This is the third set of six. 
the six classes of contact should be understood. So it was said, and with reference to what was this said, dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is eye contact. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is ear contact. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is nose consciousness, or nose contact, excuse me. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is tongue contact. Dependent on body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is body contact. Dependent on mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is mind contact. So it was with reference to this that it was said the six classes of contact should be understood. This is the fourth set of six. The six classes of feeling should be understood, so it was said, and with reference to what was this said. Dependent on the I and forms, I consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is I contact. With eye contact as condition, there is eye feeling. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is ear contact. With ear contact as condition, there is ear feeling. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is nose contact. With nose contact as condition, there is nose feeling. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is tongue contact. With tongue contact as condition, there is tongue feeling. Dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is body contact. With body contact as condition, there is body feeling. Dependent on mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. With the meeting of the three, there is mind contact. With mind contact as condition, there is mind feeling. So it was with reference to this that it was said the six classes of feeling should be understood. This is the fifth set of six. The six classes of craving should be understood, so it was said, and with reference to what was this said. Dependent on the eye and forms, eye consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is eye contact. With eye contact as condition, there is eye feeling. With eye feeling as condition, there is eye craving. Dependent on the ear and sounds, ear consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is ear contact. With ear contact as condition, there is ear feeling. With ear feeling as condition, there is ear craving. Dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is nose contact. With nose contact as condition, there is nose feeling. With nose feeling as condition, there is nose craving. Dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is tongue contact. With tongue contact as condition, there is tongue feeling. With tongue feeling as condition, there is tongue craving. Dependent on body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is body contact. With body contact as condition, there is body feeling. 
With body feeling as condition, there is body craving. Dependent on mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is mind contact. With mind contact as condition, there is mind feeling. With mind feeling as condition, there is mind craving. So it was with reference to this that it was said the six classes of craving should be understood. This is the sixth set of six. Now we have the demonstration of not-self. If anyone says the I is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the eye is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, the eye is self. Thus, the eye is not self. If anyone says forms are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of forms are seen and understood. And since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say forms are self. Thus the I is not self, forms are not self. If anyone says, I consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of I consciousness is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say, I consciousness is self. Thus, I is not self, forms are not self, I consciousness is not self. If anyone says my, my I contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of I contact is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say eye contact is self. Thus, I is not self, forms are not self, I consciousness is not self, I contact is not self. <clears throat> if anyone says I feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the of I feeling is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say I feeling is self. Thus the I is not self, forms are not self, I consciousness is not self. I contact is not self, I feeling is not self. If anyone says I craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of I craving is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say I craving is self. Thus the I is not self, forms are not self. I consciousness is not self, I contact is not self, I feeling is not self, I craving is not self. If anyone says ear is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the ear is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say the ear is self. Thus the ear is not self. If anyone says sounds are self, that is not acceptable. 
the rise and fall of sounds are seen and understood, and since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow, myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say sounds are self. Thus the ear is not self, sounds are not self. If anyone says ear consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of ear consciousness is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow, myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say ear consciousness is self. Thus the ear is not self, sounds are not self, ear consciousness is not self. If anyone says ear contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of ear contact is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say ear contact is self. Thus the ear is not self, sounds are not self, ear consciousness is not self, ear contact is not self. If anyone says ear feeling in self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of ear feeling is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say ear feeling is self. Thus the ear is not self, sounds are not self, ear consciousness is not self, ear contact is not self, ear feeling is not self. If anyone says ear craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of ear craving is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say ear craving is self. Thus the ear is not self, sounds are not self, ear consciousness is not self, ear contact is not self, ear feeling is not self, ear craving is not self. If anyone says nose is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the nose is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say nose is self. Thus, the nose is not self. If anyone says odors are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of odors are seen and understood, and since their rise and fall are discerned, it follows, myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say odors are self. Thus the nose is not self, odors are not self. If anyone says knows consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of knows consciousness is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say knows consciousness is self. <clears throat> Thus, the nose is not self, odors are not self, nose consciousness is not self. If anyone says nose contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of nose contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say nose contact is self. 
Thus the nose is not self, odors are not self, nose consciousness is not self, nose contact is not self. If anyone says nose feeling in self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of nose feeling is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say nose feeling is self. Thus, nose is not self, odors are not self, nose consciousness is not self, nose contact is not self, nose feeling is not self. If anyone says nose craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of nose feeling is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say nose craving is self. Thus, nose is not self. Odors are not self, nose consciousness is not self, nose contact is not self, nose feeling is not self, nose craving is not self. If anyone says the tongue is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the tongue is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows. Myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say the tongue is self. Thus the tongue is not self. If anyone says flavors are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of flavors are seen and understood. And since their rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say flavors are self. Thus the tongue is not self, flavors are not self. If anyone says tongue consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of the tongue consciousness is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tongue consciousness is self. Thus the tongue is not self, flavors are not self, tongue consciousness is not self. If anyone says tongue contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows, myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tongue contact is self. Thus the tongue is not self, flavors are not self, tongue consciousness is not self. Tongue contact is not self. If anyone says tongue feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue feeling is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it follows myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tongue feeling is self. Thus the tongue is not self, flavors are not self, tongue consciousness is not self, tongue contact is not self, tongue feeling is not self. If anyone says tongue craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tongue craving is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow Myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tongue craving is self. Thus, 
the tongue is not self flavors are not self tongue consciousness is not self tongue contact is not self tongue feeling is not self tongue craving is not self if anyone says the body is self that is not acceptable the rise and fall of the body is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say the body is self. Thus, the body is not self. If anyone says tangibles are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of tangibles are seen and understood, and since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say tangibles are self. Thus the body is not self, tangibles are not self. If anyone says body consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of body consciousness is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say body consciousness is self. Thus the body is not self. Tangibles are not self. Body consciousness is not self. If anyone says body contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of body contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say body contact is self. Thus the body is not self, tangibles are not self, body consciousness is not self, body contact is not self. If anyone says body feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of body feeling is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say body feeling is self. Thus the body is not self, tangibles are not self. Body consciousness is not self, body contact is not self. Body feeling is not self. If anyone says body craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of body craving is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow my self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say body craving is self. Thus the body is not self, tangibles are not self, body consciousness is not self, body contact is not self. Body feeling is not self, body craving is not self. If anyone says mind is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow. My self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind is self. Thus, mind is not self. If anyone says mind objects are self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind objects are seen and understood, and since their rise and fall are discerned, it would follow. My self rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind objects are self. Thus, mind is not self, mind objects are not self. If anyone says mind consciousness is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind consciousness is seen and understood, 
and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind consciousness is self. Thus, mind is not self, mind objects are not self, mind consciousness is not self. If anyone says mind contact is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind contact is seen and understood. And since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind contact is self. Thus, mind is not self, mind objects are not self, mind consciousness is not self, mind contact is not self. If anyone says mind feeling is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind feeling is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind feeling is self. Thus, mind is not self, mind objects are not self, mind consciousness is not self, Mind contact is not self. Mind feeling is not self. <clears throat> if anyone says mind craving is self, that is not acceptable. The rise and fall of mind craving is seen and understood, and since its rise and fall are discerned, it would follow myself rises and falls. That is why it is not acceptable for anyone to say mind craving is self. Thus mind is not self, mind objects are not self, mind consciousness is not self, mind contact is not self, mind feeling is not self, mind craving is not self. The origination of identity. Now, students, this is the way leading to the origin of identity. One regards the I thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards forms thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards I consciousness thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards I contact thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards I feeling thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards I craving thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards the ear thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards sounds thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards ear consciousness thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards ear contact thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards ear feeling thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards ear craving thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards the nose thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards odors thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards nose consciousness thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards nose contact thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. 
One regards knows feeling thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards knows craving thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards the tongue thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards flavors thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards tongue consciousness thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards tongue contact thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards tongue feeling thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards tongue craving thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards the body thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards tangibles thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards body consciousness thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards body contact thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards body feeling thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards body craving thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mind thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mind objects thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mind consciousness thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mind contact thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mind feeling thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. One regards mind craving thus, this is mine, this I am, this is myself. The cessation of identity. Now students, this is the way leading to the cessation of identity. One regards the I thus. This is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards forms thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards I consciousness thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards ear, eye contact thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards eye feeling thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards eye craving thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards the ear thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards sounds thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards ear consciousness thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards ear contact thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards ear feeling thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards ear craving thus, 
this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards the nose thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards odors thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards ear consciousness thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards nose contact thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards nose feeling thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards nose craving thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards the tongue thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards flavors thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards tongue consciousness thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards tongue contact thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards tongue feeling thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards tongue craving thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards the body thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One <coughs> regards tangibles thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards body consciousness thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards body contact thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards body feeling thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards body craving thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards mind thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards mind objects thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards mind consciousness thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards mind contact thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards mind feeling thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. One regards mind craving thus, this is not mine, this I am not, this is not myself. The underlying tendencies. Monks dependent on the eye and forms eye consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is eye contact. With eye contact as condition, there is an eye feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant eye feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust un lies within one. When is one is touched by a painful eye feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, 
weeps, beating one's breast and becomes distraught. Then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by neither painful nor pleasant eye feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger and the escape in regard to that I feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Students, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant I feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful eye feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful eye feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Students dependent on the ear and sounds ear consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is ear contact. With ear contact as condition, there arises an ear feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant ear feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful ear feeling, if one sorrows, grieves and laments, weeps, beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by neither pleasant nor painful ear feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, and the danger, and the escape in regard to that ear feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Students, that there shall be here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant ear feeling, without abolishing the under, underlying tendency to aversion towards painful ear feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful ear feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Students dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is nose contact. With nose contact as condition, there arises a nose feeling, felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant nose feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful nose feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, weeps, beating one's breasts, and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful nose feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that nose feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Students, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant nose feeling, 
without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful nose feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful nose feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Students dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is tongue contact. With tongue contact as condition, there arises a tongue feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant tongue feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful tongue feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, weeps beating one's breast and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful tongue feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is the origin, disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that tongue feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Students, one shall make here and now, an end of suffering without a. That one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant tongue feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful tongue feeling without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither plain, pleasant nor painful tongue feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Students dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is body contact. With body contact as condition, there arises a body feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant. When one is touched by a pleasant body feeling, if one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful body feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, weeps, beating one's breast, and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by neither pleasant nor painful body feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that body feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Students that one shall here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant body feeling without abolishing the underlying tendency to a aversion towards painful body feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful body feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is impossible. Students dependent on mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is mind contact. With mind contact as condition, there arises a mind feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant. When one is touched by a pleasant feeling, a pleasant mind feeling, 
If one delights in it, welcomes it, and remains holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust lies within one. When one is touched by a painful mind feeling, if one sorrows, grieves, and laments, weeps, beating one's breast, and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion lies within one. When one is touched by neither pleasant nor painful mind feeling, if one does not understand as it actually is the origination disappearance, the gratification, the danger and the escape in regard to that mind feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance lies within one. Students that one should here and now make an end of suffering without abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant mind feeling, without abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful mind feeling, without extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful mind feeling, without abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge this is impossible. The abandonment of the underlying tendency. Students dependent on the eye and forms eye consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is eye contact. With eye contact as condition, there arises an eye feeling felt as pleasant or painful, or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant eye feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it, and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful eye feeling, if one does not sorrow, grieve, and lament, does not weep, beating one's breast and become distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. <coughs> when one is touched by neither pleasant nor painful eye feeling, if one understands as it actually is the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger and the escape in regard to that I feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. Students that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant I feeling, by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion toward painful I feeling by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither painful nor pleasant eye feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is possible. Students dependent on the ear and sounds ear consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is ear contact. With ear contact as condition, there arises an ear feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant ear feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful ear feeling, if one does not sorrow, grieve, and lament, does not weep, beating one's breast, and become distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by neither pleasant nor painful ear feeling, if one understands as it actually is the origination, disappearance, gratification, the danger and the escape in regard to that ear feeling, 
then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. Students that one shall here and now make an end of uh, to suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant ear feeling, by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful ear feeling, by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful ear feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is possible. Students dependent on the nose and odors, nose consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is nose contact. With nose contact as condition, there arises a nose feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant nose feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful nose feeling, if one does not sorrow, grieve, and lament, does not weep beating one's breast and become distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful nose feeling, if one understands as it actually is, the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that nose feeling, then the underlying to tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. Students, that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant nose feeling by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful nose feeling, by extirpating the underlying tendency in regard to neither pleasant nor painful nose feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge. That is possible. Students dependent on the tongue and flavors, tongue consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is tongue contact. With tongue contact as condition, there arises a tongue feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant tongue feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not underlie within one. When one is touched by a painful tongue feeling, if one does not sorrow, grieve, and lament, does not weep beating one's breast and become distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by neither pleasant nor painful tongue feeling, if one understands as it actually is the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that tongue feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. Students that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant tongue feeling, by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful tongue feeling, by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful tongue feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is possible. Students dependent on the body and tangibles, body consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is body contact. With body contact as condition, there arises a body feeling felt as pleasant 
or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant body feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it, and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not underlie one. When one is touched by a painful body feeling, if one does not sorrow, grieve, and lament, does not weep beating one's breasts and become distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by neither pleasant nor painful body feeling, if one understands as it actually is the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger and the escape in regard to that body feeling, then one, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. Students that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant body feeling, by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion towards painful body feeling, by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful body feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is possible. Students dependent on mind and mind objects, mind consciousness arises. The meeting of the three is mind contact. With mind contact as condition, there arises a mind feeling felt as pleasant or painful or neither pleasant nor painful. When one is touched by a pleasant mind feeling, if one does not delight in it, welcome it and remain holding to it, then the underlying tendency to lust does not lie within one. When one is touched by a painful mind feeling, if one does not sorrow, grieve, and lament, does not weep beating one's breasts and becomes distraught, then the underlying tendency to aversion does not lie within one. When one is touched by a neither pleasant nor painful mind feeling, if one understands as it actually is the origination, the disappearance, the gratification, the danger, and the escape in regard to that mind feeling, then the underlying tendency to ignorance does not lie within one. Students that one shall here and now make an end of suffering by abandoning the underlying tendency to lust for pleasant mind feeling by abolishing the underlying tendency to aversion for painful mind feeling, by extirpating the underlying tendency to ignorance in regard to neither pleasant nor painful mind feeling, by abandoning ignorance and arousing true knowledge, this is possible. Liberation. Seeing thus Students, a well-taught noble disciple becomes disenchanted with the eye, disenchanted with forms, disenchanted with consciousness, disenchanted with eye contact, disenchanted with eye feeling, disenchanted with eye craving. He becomes disenchanted with ear, disenchanted with sounds, disenchanted with ear consciousness, disenchanted with ear contact, disenchanted with ear feeling, disenchanted with ear craving. He becomes disenchanted with nose, disenchanted with odors, disenchanted with nose consciousness, disenchanted with nose contact, disenchanted with nose feeling, disenchanted with nose craving. He becomes disenchanted with the tongue, disenchanted with flavors, disenchanted with tongue, 
consciousness, disenchanted with tongue contact, disenchanted with tongue feeling, disenchanted with tongue craving. He becomes disenchanted with the body, disenchanted with tangibles, disenchanted with body consciousness, disenchanted with body contact, disenchanted with body feeling, disenchanted with body craving. He becomes disenchanted with mind, disenchanted with mind objects, disenchanted with mind consciousness, disenchanted with mind contact, disenchanted with mind feeling, disenchanted with mind craving. Being disenchanted, he becomes dispassionate. Through dispassion, mind is liberated. It is, when it is liberated, there comes the knowledge it is liberated. He understands birth is destroyed. The holy life has been lived. What had to be done has been done. There is no more coming to any state of being. That is what the Blessed One said. The students were satisfied and delighted in the Blessed One's words. Now, while this discourse was being spoken through not craving and clinging, the minds of 60 students were liberated from the taint. Okay, let that sink in. I know it's a lot of repeating, but hearing it so much over and over and over again, especially this is not me, this is not mine, this I am not. That statement is good for everything that arises. Okay? Let's share some merit then. <clears throat> May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth and as a mighty power share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.